All right, so uh, thank you to everybody uh, attending today, uh, our webinar. Um, and thank you in particular to our two hosts that we have for our webinar today. Um, we have Dr. Kathy Bailey, and we also have Ryan Damaro. Um, Dr. Kathy Bailey is the president of TERF and chairman of its board of trustees. Um, she's a professor of applied linguistics at MIIS, which is the Middlebury Institute of International Studies in Monterey, California. And we also have Ryan Damaro, who's the Chief Operating Officer of TERF. Ryan has an MBA from Western Governors University and an MA in TESOL with a specialization in language program administration. So uh, thank you very much to both of you for uh, hosting for us today. And let me hand it over to Ryan. Okay, we've got a little bit of interesting feedback on the mic so far. Uh, <laughs> Kind of sit through that as the technology stuff out. I would like to start by thanking everybody for being with us today. As Rob said, I'm, my name is Ryan Damro, and I am the Chief Operating Officer of Turf. I've been working with the foundation for about seven years now. It's been a delight to serve alongside Kathy Bailey uh, since that time. What we want to do here today is to introduce Turf, uh, which is the International Research Foundation for English Language Education to Laureate CLP, the Ulrin community, if we have some folks uh, joining us from there, and we might even have a few attendees uh, from our audience that we uh, pitch our mission to on the reg regular. Um, so let's just jump right in. So TERF, this acronym confuses people sometimes because we have a really long organizational name. Um, we take the acronym from the International Research Foundation. You can see our URL is listed there alongside the information on your screen right, right now. You're not sharing uh, your screen at the moment. Oh, well, that's not the way it's supposed to be. Hold on, let me try this one more time. Thank you for letting me know. No problem. I thought I was still sharing. Let's try that one more time. There we go. It's, it's up. PowerPoint, share screen. And let's see if that does it. All right, are we up? Yep, that's good. Okay, perfect. Uh, so excuse me, everyone. Uh, so again, there is our logo, our name, and our URL. And let me move on from there. Uh, Kathy and I are electing to not share our videos today uh, for reasons of bandwidth issues, but uh, that is what we look like, um, Dr. Kathy Bailey and me. And we wanna start this webinar by learning a little bit more about you. Uh, a couple of questions that we have, if you wouldn't mind uh, typing into the chat box, are uh, from what country are you joining us and what position do you hold in your work context? I'm going to see if I can find out how I can look at these, the chat box here as well, to see if anybody wants to share that information. There we are. <clears throat> we'll wait just a minute here. USA Curriculum Manager. Shannon Olson. Rob's joining us from Berlin. Who else is out there joining us? Okay, we have a friend from Chile, the English department. Very good. Excellent. So it seems like we're well represented in Latin America today. Very cool. All right. So we're hoping that the content that we're going to share with you about TERF today is relevant for your various positions and the various contexts in which you work. Uh, TERF definitely takes an international focus to its work. We are based in the United States, but we have a really interesting uh, setup where I actually live in Michigan. I telecommute and I, I, I manage my work from uh, my office here in Michigan. Kathy is in Monterey, California, and we have a board of trustees that are spread out throughout the world. For example, we have several in the United States, a couple in Latin America, several in, uh, several in Europe a board member from Australia who lives there. Um, and so we have a strong history of, of the organizational focus being set by our board of trustees who bring their different contextual interests and the needs from those, uh, the different places that they live in, and they help to set our organizational focus over a six month and one year period. I see that Kathy's telling me that my mic is kind of quiet. Can, is, are other people having a difficult time hearing me as well? I can hear you just fine. Um, if okay. Anyone wants to put in the chat box if you're having any problems with the audio. Do let me know if you are. I'll try to speak up. Okay. It looks like we're we're good. 
Sorry, Kathy, you've heard my voice enough, so I'll just keep moving on. <laughs> okay, uh, so the overview of the organization, or the, uh, the PowerPoint that we wanna give to you today in this webinar, we're gonna first cover a little bit of turf organizational background, tell you some things about our mission, our history, but we won't spend too much time on that. Um, we'll move on to some of the resources that we have to offer. All of our resources are free to use, and so we're hoping that what we provide the public are really useful to you in your various contexts. And we'll wrap up by talking about some of our other programmatic offerings. All right, so we wanna jump into the background. Our mission involves promoting research and best practices to improve the use of English in the global knowledge economy of the 21st century. So. If we want to kind of break that down a little bit further, what does that mean? A lot of organizations have very ambitious missions that set the tone for their work, and certainly ours is no different. Indeed, the, the, the landscape of language education around the world is very complex, and it's very personal, depending on where you live and what the issues are that you're dealing with. Uh, and also, of course, the work responsibilities. We all have somebody that we answer to, whether it's our bosses or our colleagues, and it's certainly the stakeholders that we serve. So um, TURF, to help carry out its mission, um, it has four ways that we like to try to understand this. The first of which is that we wish to implement a research and development program that will generate new knowledge and inform and improve the quality of English language teaching and learning around the globe. Again, this is not just focused on the United States. We also aim at promoting the application of research to practical language problems, and we accomplish that aspect of our mission in different ways through commissioning research, through uh, providing grants to individuals who are completing their doctorate degrees, and we have publication activities. I'll be getting into all of these issues a little bit later, but again, the application of, you know, how do we take research that's being done and apply them to practical language problems that we all face in our various jobs. Um, another point in our mission that is important to us is that we wish to collect, organize, and disseminate information and research on the teaching and learning of language. So in this, in this consideration, we try to be um, cognizant, and also the next part of our mission as well, about issues related to language education that go beyond English. I mean, English language education is part of our work. Um, and of course, the main part is part of our name as well, but certainly we do not consider ourselves uh, limited to only issues that uh, extend themselves to English language education. We try to take a broader focus and think about language education on a global level. Uh, and lastly, we look to influence the formation and implementation of appropriate language education policies, recognizing the importance of indigenous languages and cultures worldwide, and of English as an international language. So these are some of the points of our mission that guide our work. Um, we were founded in 1998. We, our seed money to establish TERF was provided by what's now known as the TESOL International Association. That's the teachers of English to speakers of other languages. I'm sure that you are all well aware of TESOL. Uh, but in 1999, to separate the identity of the two organizations, we went, and, we went out and sought our own independent status as a charitable organization in the United States. And we did, in fact, gain that nonprofit status in the eyes of the IRS here, which is uh, important because we have been operating autonomously since that time. However, uh, we still, of course, partner with TESOL and actually just uh, next year we'll be putting on our first conference with them, but perhaps more on that later. Uh, I'm gonna ask Kathy to see, Kathy has been uh, serving TURF for quite a while before she became the TURF president and chairman of the board of trustees. She was a, uh, a trustee and so she's been with TURF for quite a while. She is an excellent source of institutional knowledge. And so I'm gonna ask Kathy to see if she wants to add anything to this discussion of TURF's background. No, I think what you said is fine, Lion. I'm just um, very excited to have this opportunity to interact with people in the Laureate Network, and we're really excited about establishing this new partnership. Absolutely. That is so true. I kind of skipped over that jumping into the content of the PowerPoint, but we are very indeed excited to be working with you. Uh, okay. So I, of course, going into too much organizational background might uh, turn some people off. We'd love, rather spend more time discussing our resources and our programs and seeing uh, the connection between what we're doing, what we have to offer and to your particular interests. So to get a feel for what the responsibilities are that some of you have, 
I'm wondering if you could please type in the chat box again one or two of your major work responsibilities. And as you're doing so, I, I chose to find this image and put it on the screen here of this gentleman with four hands and gosh, I mean, I know that I wish I had four or eight hands sometimes with all the different things that I have to do for turf. It's quite the uh, position of numerous responsibilities as I'm sure you all deal with that as well. Let's see. So I'm hoping we'll get a little bit of participation. Kathy has been my mentor since 2006 when I became her student at the Monterey Institute that's now called the Middlebury Institute of International Studies. And she taught me to be patient and about wait times when asking your audience questions. <laughs> How can you get that, Jocelyn asked. So curriculum design and development, Katarina says, course development, quality assurance. Okay, we definitely have some resources that would be helpful to you, Katarina. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Assessment, curriculum design. Okay, we got CPD, of course. Add a few hands, and that's me. Okay. Communicating with coordinators. Yep, that's a big job responsibility. Implement English language courses for all undergraduate programs at UNAB. All right, so I see that we have a lot of administrators here on the line is what it was kind of what I'm gleaning from the responses of the audience here today. Um, I believe that we definitely have some, some useful resources that will be relevant to the various contexts and the needs that you have. So let's go ahead and get into those. Thank you for sharing those with me. Um, First of all, just a little preview of TURF's website homepage. Um, some of the slides that I'm gonna be sharing with you are helping you navigate around our website. I'd like to believe it's pretty straightforward. One of the um, responsibilities I have for TURF is, in addition to the other things I do, is to manage our website. So a lot of times people will say, hey, where do I find this on TURF's website? I'm like, oh, you can't find it, that's so odd. But it's one of those situations where I'm far too close to the material and um, sometimes certainly need to offer a little more guidance. So I do want to share just some of these little uh, pointers here as we're going through uh, our website. So one of the most uh, trafficked web areas of our website is our access to resources section. And that's where you're going to find all of these things that I'm presenting to you here in these next few slides. Uh, if we move forward from the home page view and we move over to um, this next page, you're going to see a list of all of our, all of our resources. Uh, it's, it's quite the diverse collection of things that would be of interest to administrators, to researchers, language teachers, of course. Students can get some help from some of the resources that we have. We do share some practical tools that would be helpful to students, but a lot of times our audience is at the administrative level, definitely concerns researchers. We try to develop some resources for teachers as well. It's been one of our newer initiatives to help um, improve the practices in the in the classroom in that way so hopefully we've got a little something for everybody that's joining us here uh, Kathy started this idea of <clears throat> excuse me developing reference lists oh that would have been a few years ago and since that time she's worked very diligently to go out and procure references from different scholars people that we work with some of our grantees and people who are kind of be our, our specialists in specific areas so at this point uh, we had now have over 170 topics that are of interest to teachers and researchers. And again, those other stakeholders that I just named. Uh, it's, they're, they're free to download. They're all stored as Word documents. You can share them widely with your audience as, or with your colleagues as you like. That section of our website generates a lot of traffic for us, like I mentioned. Um, we believe that these are really, really useful tools. We have people that are writing to us. Um, every week trying to add to these resources, suggesting a couple of citations of their own. And certainly we welcome that kind of interaction from the public. If you have, if you have published some works in the past that you go and find a topic that we have already covered and would like us to add that to the list, it's a really nice scholarly um, activity to share uh, with, you know, the wider audience that go out and actually use these, these reference lists. And if it's of any help to you, of course, if you're going up for review in your position, we, we always send our, uh, contributors, a nice thank you letter that would be fit to be included in a professional portfolio. And so if that's something that's interests you, we, we'd certainly like that kind of engagement from the public. Um, these are updated regularly. I just went through and updated about 30 of them yesterday. Um, so please, we really encourage you to share those, uh, those resources with 
with your colleagues. Ryan, let me jump in for a minute Please. here. Uh, just very quickly, as you were typing your areas of interest and responsibility in the chat bar, I made a few notes, and I want to point out to you that some of those 170 topics includes, include things that are directly relevant to your work. For example, several of you um, have some responsibilities for curriculum design and implementation, and one of the big reference lists that we have is about curriculum development in language teaching. Um, there are several on assessment. There's a quite good one on um, professional development. And then I think it was Monica typed um, language policy. We have a good reference list on language planning and policy. So I'd like to invite you to have a look and see if there's um, any, any uh, collection there that's of interest to you. And as Ryan said, we, we happily update these reference lists on a regular basis. We don't, unfortunately, have the resources to share the articles or the chapters or the books with people, but the reference lists are um, available for free. So please make make yourself uh, free with them and in, enjoy them and use them to, however you like. That's a very good point. Thank you, Kathy, for catching that. I've had to turn my comments off because it was distracting from the PowerPoint here, but please continue to field those kinds of, uh, of questions and then integrate them to what it is that we're delivering here. And, and I, I do want to mention one thing. We actually were sent recently a resource. I'm sure many of you are familiar with Professor Jack Richards, um, University of Sydney, I do believe that's where he's still at. Um, so Jack Richards has this great website and I created a link yesterday to uh, a section of our website that I'm going to cover in just a second about teachers resources and on his website he actually has quite a few uh, different readings that are available and free to download. Not everything that's listed there, but he has a lot of resources that were really helpful. So of course we wanted to cross link to some of his works. And what I just pulled up on my computer was this article for just for example, that he published in 2013 called curriculum approaches in language teaching forward, central and backward design. So those are the kinds of resources we really like to try to post on our website as well, because for example, it's really useful to some of the people who are joining us here today in this webinar. And at the same time, he's clearly made it a point to share that on his website and he must have the rights to be able to do so. So at that rate, it's, uh, it's a nice opportunity to go out and get a really nice article that you can read, contemplate, perhaps share with your colleagues and get some ideas generated for the curriculum design issues that you might be dealing with. Okay, uh, some links that we have on our website. Uh, we share links to organizations with uh, two organizations who have missions that are similar to ours. And so if you again access that section of our website, you'll find all these great uh, different organizations. Some are based out of the United States. Many of them tend to be nonprofit organizations. We also have links to organizations who are outside the U.S. as well. And we're always looking to add to this. You know, sometimes some of these organizations, if people go out and learn about them from our website, they go on their website, they might find a job opportunity, which is excellent. Um, not that we're linking to that directly, but you'll, you'll find quite a few things. I, I, I Tefl's listed there. I believe that we now have uh, Laureate on our website as well. So really useful information there. We try to tag them in ways that you can, can sort them. If you're a program administrator and you sort by program administrators, you can find ones that would be more relevant to, to that line of work if that's what you're doing. Also for researchers, outreach efforts, and things of that nature. Um, and again, yes, many of these also, uh, organizations and associations, they have constituencies that are similar to TERF. Uh, another one of the resources that we keep is the, these research organizations, ones that, again, we're thinking like-minded organizations to TERF. If somebody comes on our website and has interest in the work that we're doing, we would like to believe that they would have interest in what other organizations are doing. So really what we're trying to do, and similar to what Laureate has done in Cambridge University Press, is cre creating this community of practice that, that shares um, information from the organization that would be, you know, fit for other stakeholders and the constituencies that they serve. So if we can get more people, uh, provide people access to more information that is useful for the different posts and what they're doing. Uh, we believe that that's going to help overall strengthen the efforts of language educators around the world, regardless of whatever your role may be. Uh, we also have some links to journals. This is actually a nice section of the website, in, in, in my opinion. What it allows people to do is to go through and read, all, read a little short 
um, excerpts about the journals and then see if that journal is of interest to administrators or researchers or curriculum designs to keep using those same kind of themes that we've been using so far. And so a lot of times these journals end up being open source, which is really nice because you can go and download articles and get ideas again for some of the main issues that you're dealing with. Uh, it also can lead to information if you're trying to publish research or publish something that you've been working on with colleagues, whatever it might be. I mean, I've seen state of the art in curriculum design, for example, and there can be some really useful content uh, that is provided if you go and look on some of those journals website. And so it provides a really nice hub for you to be able to get into, um, to gain information that you may have not otherwise known. Um, I talked about the tags and so again, those tags are available that there and free for you to use and sort and see what might be of interest to you. Uh, teachers associations, we oftentimes get the uh, receive requests from the public, uh, people who are interested in, in publishing their research or joining a professional organization. If they're not otherwise already aware of some of the professional associations in their local community, we try to share information that would be relevant to them. Um, a lot of times that can lead to some really wonderful conference or event seminars, different ty types of things that they can go out and meet like-minded people, those involved in language education, uh, and network with them and see what those opportunities might lead to. And at this point, we've listed uh, over 80 associations. And so when somebody's new to an area, maybe they relocated for a job and they're trying to get out there and, and, and do more, this is a nice opportunity for them to have access to that information and try to get to know people wherever they might be living. <clears throat> okay. So this resource is the, the, the get published link. You're gonna, again, find that in that main resources hub that I, that link I provided earlier. Uh, this is, we, we oftentimes in the different listservs that we subscribe to, we get these announcements about different sorts of publications that an organization is attempting to, um, an organization is attempting to, to compile. They a lot of times have guest editors. I'm sure many of you belong to listservs and receive these same kinds of um, requests for people to, to actually submit a paper. Um, just yesterday I was working on the website again. The TESOL Quarterly has a nice call out right now for papers on the topic of English medium. English as a medium of instruction in TESOL. Um, Sage Publications, for example, has revisiting the speaker construct. And so what we like to do in this section of our site is to provide a little bit of background of whatever the call is related to. We try to provide the publisher information, let people know when the submissions are due. That is like the call for abstracts, typically a 200 word abstract, and then where they can find further information. And so this we try to regular, or update regularly as well. And if you, again, have yourself or colleagues who could benefit from man, where am I going to publish my research? I've got this great topic. I've been working on this project for a couple of years, but I'm not sure where to, where to try to submit my abstract. This can be a really useful section for people to find a journal or a book that would be a nice fit for the work that they're doing. I guess, Kathy, I'm, I'm talking quite a bit. I'm going to see if you want to add anything to uh, anything that I've said so far. No, I think what you're saying is pretty clear, Ryan. I, um, I will jump in when I have an addition. Um, I just want to stress to our uh, participants today that we welcome input in updating these resources. So if there's something that they know about that we haven't listed, for them to write to you at um, info at Turf Online would be the best place, right? That's correct. Yeah, and you can find all of our contact information, email address um, at turfonline.org, and we'll, we'll provide that URL again a little bit later in the talk. But that point that Kathy just made is really important. You know, I, I'm, I'm rambling on here about the different resources that we have. But we really we rely on the public and our audiences to add to what it is that we're doing. So please don't ever hesitate to get in touch. And if, you're, if it's just a question that you have of, whether something might be appropriate for what it is that we're collecting and posting to our website. I'm, I'm gonna be the person that's answering your email, so please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. We, we certainly wanna be as inclusive as possible. Okay, so advancing on, um, another type of resource that we provide on our website uh, relates to different conference opportunities that are going on in language education around the globe. Uh, again, this is something that I was updating yesterday. 
and a few of the conferences that we have coming up. Um, of course, there's, there's TESOL next year that's going to be in Seattle. Um, I love the World Congress. Uh, one of our participants earlier on this webinar said that she's from Brazil. Um, that's the 18th World Congress of Applied Linguistics is being held in Rio this year. Uh, it's a great opportunity. Uh, another example would be the British Association of Applied Linguists offering their annual one-day conference. And sometimes, too, we get news of these great online conferences where they're free to attend and they have some really uh, notable speakers who are contributing to the conference. And it's, it's exciting when we see that. Of course, you know, we would all love to be going to conferences around the world. It's exciting to travel. It's exciting to network and get to know colleagues in different contexts. Um, but of course, they can be cost prohibitive. So, you know, when, when these online conferences come up and you get, in, and you get access for free to, to join in a conference, it's really exciting. I think we have a free one that's coming up to that I just posted yesterday, but it's slipping my mind which it was. Uh, so it's, it's a nice opportunity for you to visit the conference section of our website, learn about what conferences. Sometimes there might be one coming up that you didn't know about that's in your area, maybe only a couple hours away. So we encourage our audience to come back and check regularly and, and to see uh, what opportunities might be available to them. Let's see. Practical tools. Okay, this is what I touched on a little bit earlier in discussing that link I created yesterday to Jack Richards' website. Uh, we try to, again, this is one of the newer uh, endeavors that we have been working on, but we're trying to add to this all the time. And if, again, please send me some links if you have some, some readings that might be free to the public. Yesterday, for example, I was adding another resource by um, con the Canadian Modern Language Review. There were three interesting um, articles that were written by people in our field. Uh, Marlies Horst, for example, what do we, her article is free to download, what do we know about the best practices for teaching vocabulary? So this is something that's super practical. Um, if you're an administrator and that's the kind of article that you're, you know, it's a topic that you're covering with some of your your staff, it's a wonderful opportunity to go out and say, look, this is a really reputable uh, journal. We think that you find this interesting and then maybe do like a jigsaw reading with some of your staff and just discuss some of the issues of teaching vocabulary. So there's quite a bit of information there, um, stuff like rubric building tools, technology tools for teachers, speaking and pronunciation websites, language assessment guidelines, those are provided by Actful. Um, podcasts and then some uh, kind of a miscellaneous kind of category. So uh, this list is by no means exhaustive. Uh, I really personally, this is one of my own personal endeavors. I want to keep adding to this. I want to diversify it and have lots of other subcategories because again, this has been a driver for our website in terms of traffic. And it's not so much for just generating traffic to our website. It's, it's again, because we want to put useful resources and tools in the hands of our stakeholders and hope that, you know, over the next few years, we continue to build this up, that the community of, you know, turf stakeholders will continue to grow and be sharing their ideas. And that way we're all networked in a little bit more together. Okay, what else do we have here? Uh, grant fellowship and award opportunities. Uh, this, we try to provide as much information for people who are there are different grants for conducting research. Sometimes organizations will um, share a call for research into a specific kind of program that they have. So for example, like ETS and their TOEFL program, they're oftentimes uh, sharing information or have calls for people to do research about the TOEFL as test impact, washback, perhaps things like that. Um, other times, what you're gonna find here, are links to grant and award opportunities for people who want to travel to a conference. So like AAAL has some offerings, I do believe. Uh, TESOL definitely has some offerings for those who have their papers accepted to the convention. They can compete for a travel grant that'll help offset the costs of like their airplane ticket and the hotel and things like that. So um, we encourage you to use that section of our website as well. And again, because grants and awards are so a lot of times it's very difficult to come by. Where do we get funding uh, you know, to, to, to accomplish some of the tasks that we're, that we're working on, the research, whatever it may be. And so as much information that we can curate and post and share, we hope that people end up making use of it. Uh, so we encourage you to visit that section. Slidecasts is another one of our endeavors. 
that section of our website features a number of different resources of presentations that Turf has been part of over the years. Um, Nick Savile, for example, um, a couple of years ago presented on quality assurance. I forget, Katarina, if it was you that had said earlier about quality assurance. Um, you're going to find links to some of these slide casts on our website. Um, we were using a slide cast, I should perhaps, it's actually, yeah, it says it here. Um, it's going to feature the PowerPoint matched with audio. And so typically what I've been able to do is to record a session and then take a PowerPoint and match it up. We've been using this great tool, um, SlideShare, for a while that ended up that company changed their their outlook for their company. And they took down a lot of the the... the materials that we had created, but I believe I was able to restore most of them. So if you do find the slide casts on our website, you should still be able to access um, the audio with the PowerPoint. So that's not just a static PowerPoint. You get examples um, of the actual speaker giving that talk and hopefully it relates to some of the work that you're doing. Um, our YouTube channel also provides um, some of these slide casts as well. So if you find you know, turf on YouTube, you're gonna see more, uh, more of these videos that I'm talking about. Let's see. And of course, this talk that Kathy and I are giving here today will end up being on our website as well as a slide cast. Um, annotated bibliographies. Uh, these, this is another great resource. Uh, articles and books on language classroom research, action research, teacher research, research methodology. Again, this could be a really useful, it, it kind of takes the reference lists um, to another level, but granted, the topics that we cover aren't quite as diverse as what we cover in our reference list, but what's nice about this is that you get a little preview of a particular reading or a particular book that could end up being helpful to you. Um, and then you can decide, you know, should I go find this uh, book in my library? Is it available somewhere online? Google Books can be, or Google Scholar can be a really nice resource. Um, so we encourage you to check that out as well. Free online training, um, link to the NIH, that's the National Institute for Health, uh, protecting human research participants. This issue is a really important one. Um, one of the programs we're gonna talk about later is our doctoral dissertation grants program. And uh, as part of their application to TERF to seek a grant, we asked to make sure that they have done some sort of uh, uh, ethics training for conducting research. Um, if any of you are involved in MA and uh, doctoral level um, educational context, of course, you've been through this before. Um, it's an issue that should not be looked over, and this particular tool can be of great help to you. Um, free software and guide to using R. This is also really useful. Um, one of our colleagues shared this link with us, and it's a good example of a type of resource that we didn't have on our website previously, and somebody wrote to us, we were able to share it, and then... Again, it gets accessed quite regularly because people need to do this when they're doing, or they oftentimes need this tool about using R um, in order to complete the research that they've done. Let's see. Okay. I am going to now turn back to the audience here for a moment and see if we can find out about any of your research interests. And also, this is kind of a, a two-part pause for me to stop talking. I want to learn about some of your research interests, but I'd also be happy to take some of your questions if you have any at this point about some of the resources that I just covered. And I'll also note right now is that we're planning on saving about 10 to 15 minutes at the end of this talk to field some more questions that you may have just on anything. So please, if you don't mind, type away in the chat box. And just as a follow-up to... Um Ryan's comments previously, um, for example, Katarina just put EMI vocational education. This is this whole topic of English as a medium of instruction, as you know, is a really hot issue right now. Mm -hmm. and, um, we're, we're very excited to be focusing on that as one of our research priorities. Also, I can see that um, Christopher Johnson just typed 100% online language learning. Ryan will be telling you a little bit later about our publications about mobile assisted language learning and he and I along with our board colleague Michael Carrier from the UK just finished editing a book about digital language learning and teaching so these are concerns of ours as well I see that Monica wrote about flipping the classroom and one of the chapters in that forthcoming book is about the flipped classroom uh, Abinitas is, is interested in that as well and then uh, two of you put uh, Clil um, there's a good uh, reference list on our website that I think on our website is probably referred to by the Canadian and American 
term content-based instruction instead of CLIL, but that's available to you. And then uh, Gordon just typed language policy research. That's going to be the topic of our next book. Uh, I've started editing that with uh, Jody Crandall. We expect that to be out in 2018. The one about digital um, learning and teaching is going to be out in March of 2017. So I'm really excited to see the things that you are listing as your um, interest. Let me see. Abenita, as you put PBL, I'm, I'm assuming that's project-based learning. Is that mm -hmm. correct? If so, we do have a reference list on that topic as well. So I'm, I'm very excited to see the kinds of things that interest you. Mm -hmm. Back over to you, Ryan. I'm turning off my mic again. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. Those are great connections to make. Um, Abenitas wrote a little bit earlier about paying for a subscription. I'm not sure if that was a subscription to Turf's resources or for our slide, um, for our slide cast that we've done. Um, I can say this and then it'll speak maybe a little bit more generally to your, to help answer your question is that any information on our website, we do not sell anything and we don't have any source of revenue generation that relies on selling a product or a service. And we do have royalties from the books that we, the series that Kathy was just mentioning that we co-publish with Routledge, Taylor and Francis, and we collect royalties. But outside of that, we, we don't have any sort of revenue generation that is from the, the selling of a service or a product. Um, so therefore, by way of saying that, uh, my point is that everything on our website is free to download, free to share. Um, you know, we, a lot of times people are linking to our website, to some of our different resources that we have. So, um, no, you certainly don't need a subscription. We don't have membership. Um, we're, we're not a membership based organization. We generate 100% of our revenue from the public, from either the sponsors that we work with or from donations from individual donors that, um, that have been supporting us over the years. So yeah, these are, this is really, I'm finally into the comment chat box here and I'm noticing all these different topics and I definitely see the intersection of Turf's work to the areas of interest from the audience today. And that's really, really encouraging. I hope to highlight a few more of those resources and how they apply to your work here in this next section about our programmatic offerings. Um, let me yes. just point out to you that it's about 25 minutes of in terms of that. time management. Yeah, I just, I, you know, it's one of those situations before you've done a webinar and you, you're so concerned, okay, can I fill up an hour? And then once I get into this, I end up just spending so, such a long time just talking because it's exciting to share all this information with you. But thank you for that guidance. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll stay on track. Um, if I fly, if I go through anything too quickly and you want to circle the wagons back to something that I may have mentioned um, at the end of my talk here with Kathy, then please, you know, just keep that question and we'll come back and, and answer it. Uh, so. The three major programmatic offerings beyond our resources, we have, uh, we, we're certainly engaged in publications. We have our doctoral dissertation grants program and then the latest prize competition that we offer annually is our newest program that we're in the second year of doing. Um, but I'm gonna start with the publications. Uh, our first publications, well, maybe I shouldn't get ahead of myself. There's the homepage again, just directing you to the different, um, the publications landing page. Uh, so again, these resources are free to download. The books that we do with Routledge are not free to download. Um, those unfortunately are done with a publisher. So, you know, they're, they're, they're for sale and there are discounts that can be extended, but um, also inspection copies can be ordered too. And that might be a nice way to go for, for some folks. I think the inspection copies are delivered digitally, um, but there's also a look inside function too. And you'll find links to all the books that we've done so far uh, on our website. Uh, but however, the other um, papers that we've commissioned in the past include the topics of mobile assisted language learning. Uh, you'll find links again to that, uh, to that particular endeavor that was done, I believe in 2013. I'll have Kathy correct me a little bit later. Um, but you will find some of the papers that we commissioned that were related to that little mini series that we did on some of the topics that you're talking about, online language learning. Um, we also have a, a study that we commissioned and authored by Denise Murray a few years back on online English language teacher education, and that was uh, that was possible through a um, a donation that David Noonan, one of our trustees, matched with Anaheim University, that's based out of Southern California, and so that actually we're in this process of producing the second study for that. And if anybody's joining us at the TESOL convention next year in Seattle, 
Denise Murray and Marianne Christensen were the two responsible for authoring that study, and they'll be presenting on the topic. And so we encourage you to come to that. That follow-up study will be available on our website, we expect, by about the middle of March, definitely by the time the TESOL convention rolls around. And it's going to be very informative. Kathy and I have been working on the editing process so far, and we're very pleased with the work. Um, and a couple of older studies that we did, English at Work and English in Multilingual Global Corporations. You can have a look at those as well. Again, those are free to download and pretty lengthy reports. I think that you'll find them interesting. <clears throat> I don't think I included a slide here. That was probably my oversight. But again, if you access that link right there, just to backtrack a little bit, you'll see some descriptions about the topics that we um, produced with Routledge. The first one was on the topic of teaching and learning English in the Arabic speaking world. We followed that up with a volume on teaching and learning English grammar. And then we moved into one on teacher education, professional development, and TESOL. And then the book that Kathy was mentioning most recently was Digital Language Learning and Teaching. And that particular volume, based on, again, the comments that I just read in the chat box, seems to be one of the ones that would be perhaps the, the best fit for some of the areas of interest that you all have. Okay, so let me advance a couple slides here. Okay, so the doctoral dissertation grants. Uh, TERF, since 2002, has been making grants uh, available to individuals who are advanced to candidacy, or also known as ABD, all but dissertation, in their doctoral programs. And so we've awarded over, let's see here, we've awarded 95 grants to individuals from more than 20 countries at this point. The eligibility concerns with the um, with the doctoral dissertation grants program are very few for example people don't need to be a US citizen they don't have to belong to TESOL as a member or anything like that they just need to be enrolled in a legitimate doctoral program be advanced to candidacy like I mentioned and follow the instructions in the call for proposals if this particular program is is what I would most likely consider our flagship uh, program that we that we've maintained over the years really we started offering it a few years after we were established and it's been, it's helped to put us on the map. You know, we're a growing organization, uh, but yet we, there's a lot of interest from people around the globe who continually ask us about when's your call for proposals coming out? Will you be offering the doctoral dissertation grants program next year? And it's been just a great, great driver in terms of uh, traffic to our website and adding to our vi uh, visibility. Um, just actually this year, Laureate, uh, was joining our movement and supporting doctoral work around the globe and they, they got involved in helping to award some grants to doctoral level students so that was really exciting for us to form that partnership and a couple of the other sponsors that we have Cambridge um, English Language Assessment Cambridge University Press and British Council um, okay and then the other point that I wanted to make here too is about our research priorities I have to see if I have that um, our research priorities, we have several, and these really help to guide our work. Um, just real quick, they involve digital technology and language education, English as a medium of instruction, language assessments, language planning and policy, language teacher education, plurilingualism and in business industry, the professions and educational contexts, and students age and effective English language education. So it's really quite a, a broad net that we're, that we're casting in the community of researchers around the world. And we, based on, again, what it is apparently that you're interested in, it seems like our research priorities are quite a direct match with a lot of the things that you're interested in. Okay. Uh, we do offer application guidance uh, just in the form of a few videos, and you can access those on TERF's website. See that I'm kind of getting close to um, the last 10 minutes of the talk. So I'm just going to skip over a couple of these slides, but you're welcome to go on the DDG landing page and learn more information about the program. If you have um, any colleagues or you are a doctoral supervisor, this program, we would really appreciate if you share it with some of your colleagues and just let them know that these grants are out there. They're made in the amount of up to US $5,000 and can be really irreplaceable for helping to, you know, individuals to finish their doctoral work. Um, okay, so that's the DDG program. I'm going to lastly talk about TERF's latest prize. And there's a little arrow pointing at where you can find information about the latest prize. Um, let me advance the slide here. So our 
the full name of the prize is the Turf James E. Alatus Prize for Research on Language Policy and Planning in Educational Contexts. Uh, this particular uh, program was started a couple of years ago. Just earlier this year, we awarded our first Alatus Prizes recipient, Dr. Shondell Nero from the New York University. And, oh no. Okay. Sorry, my Skype for some reason is just magically starting out of nowhere. That's lovely. Um, oh, Jesus. My apologies. Uh, so we started just earlier this year and, or excuse me, awarded our first recipient earlier this year. The prize bestows um, a $500, 500 US dollar award on the recipient. And right now we're in our second year of review work. So over the past few months, we had our call for nominations out there and people could submit or nominate an article or chapter from a peer reviewed journal that, um, and with an accompanying cover page stating why that particular um, publication was fit for receiving the latest prize. And they would, individuals would need to tie the, the nomination and the work to what the scope of the latest prize is. So that means, okay, so what can an actual nomination look like? Uh, it can look like this. The research uh, can either be country and language specific or country and language general. So it's not restricted to English only. We've had quite a few nominations um, from interesting language planning and policy contexts. Let's say, for example, there was a paper that was submitted in, in Rwanda or one from Jamaica. Um, talking about the different issues that LPMP um, have rooted in those particular contexts. So it's quite interesting, actually. Uh, we're, we're doing a review work right now, and next year at the TESOL convention, we'll award our second latest prize recipient. <clears throat> of course, it'll be announced earlier. Okay, so I'm getting to the end of our talk here. So I'm going to open up the floor in just a moment to... Um, for questions and hopefully Kathy will get involved here as well. I'm sure some people would like to hear from her uh, The summary of this talk, please get involved. Our work is re Again relies on the involvement of the public whether it's through sharing the references promoting your conference Utilizing our resources joining our newsletter mailing list uh, We just really hope that you will spread the news about turf let people know about our resources our different programs that we have available for for you to utilize and to also add to them we, we truly do encourage uh, the additions of the work to ours um, and then yeah of course to telling your colleagues about turf so uh, a couple of parting thoughts here too is the 2017 in 17 DDG competition opens in December of this year and then we'll be putting out our call for nominations for the next to latest prize in around May or June of next year. So I'm at my summary slide here. The thank you from Turf's Board of Trustees, a little image of some of our trustees, and then a couple of TESOL people there as well, the director Rosa Aronson and then Sarah Sars in the back there behind Kathy. So I thank you and I asked Kathy to see if she has anything to add at this point. No, I just want to say um, that we're really, uh, as I mentioned before, we're really excited to uh, be partnering with Laureate and I'm really totally thrilled that so many of your research interests and professional responsibilities align with the research priorities that TURF has established. So let's, um, let's uh, turn this over to Q&A or input that you might have. And uh, I just remind you that if you do want to get on the mailing list, um, you can write to Ryan at, I think it's info at turfonline.org. Is that correct, Ryan? That's correct. Yeah, if you get a response from me, it's going to be from our Gmail account. It's a lot easier to, to manage from, from Gmail. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, absolutely. I'll be able to reply if you do that. Okay. And the other thing is to let you know that we do not uh, sell our mailing list or, or give it away. We're not trying to raise money from publishers. So getting on our mailing list for the monthly newsletter does not in any way uh, indicate that you're going to get 4,000 more emails every month. That's just one from us. So what can we what can we share with you that might be of use to you? What questions or comments do you have for us? I'm going to share while people might be typing in their comments a link to join Turf's newsletter mailing list in case it's helpful. Good. Uh, yes, absolutely. Info at turfonline.org. And there's the organizational email. 
Um, let me ask Rob if you can see the, the link that Ryan just put up and also the nope. email or if those came to me privately. I just noticed that those are private, so let me do that again. Okay. So there. there's the info yeah. at Turf Online. And Ryan monitors that address all the time if you have some kind of question or comment for him. And if it's something that he needs to run by me, he will. So we're, we're in constant communication on a daily basis, even though he lives on the other side of the country now. And we're, we're happy to get back to you if you have a question or a comment. Great. So do we have any uh, questions um, for, from anybody, any of the participants? The, the chat box is open for any questions. Well, people might be lots to digest indeed, Gordon. It's hard to cover an entire organization's work in a short one hour um, session here. Gordon, I noticed your comment earlier about what happened to SlideShare. I, it's a darn good question. I'm not so sure I I ever got a full explanation, but it was a pity when they took it down. I mean, the technology was never perfect, but it was one of the best free online tools that I was utilizing in my work regularly. Thanks, Jocelyn. Thank you, Chris. We appreciate that. Yeah. If you have any questions at all, please just be sure to get in touch. We love hearing from, from our colleagues around the world. You know, uh, Ryan, while the, the participants are potentially typing, let me just share with you, Ryan has this slide of, of our board members here. I'm going to tell you a little about them. He mentioned earlier what an international group it is. On the far left, some of you may recognize Nick Saville from the Cambridge Eng English Language Assessment Group. And then next to Nick, we have uh, Donna Christian, who for many years was the uh, director of the Center for Applied Linguistics in Washington, D.C. She's retired from that position, but still works for the center. And then we have David Noonan, our Aussie friend who lives and works in Hong Kong, but has probably been a speaker at a conference you've attended at some point since he's quite the globetrotter. And then next to him with the pearls is Ana Silvia Ramirez, who's the head of the Instituto Guatemalteco uh, Norte Americano in, in uh, Guatemala. She runs a very large national English language program there. And behind her is our colleague Jun Yu from China, he is uh, a professor now at New York University, most recently having moved from Georgia State. And just in front of June in the pink sweater is uh, our wonderful colleague, Lorraine DeMatos, who's in uh, Sao Paulo. Gordon, are you in Sao Paulo right now? If you are, you should look up Lorraine because she's great, good fun, and, and really uh, wonderful. She works for the... Um, uh, Cultura Inglesa. Cultura Inglesa there, the big British language school. Mm -hmm. And behind her, the blonde lady is Marianne Christensen, a former TESOL president who is a trustee from the University of Utah. And then the lady in the coat is our lovely uh, Rosa Aronson, who is the um, executive director of the TESOL Association. And behind Rosa is her assistant for educational programs at TESOL, Sarah Saar. And that's me in the black suit and the red blouse. And behind my shoulder is our colleague, Michael Carrier, whom I mentioned earlier. Um, Michael is uh, with Cambridge and also works as a private consultant. He's the one that edited the digital learning and teaching book with Ryan and me. And then uh, you may recognize in the purple sweater, Jody Crandall from the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Uh, Jody has been in many different countries around the world doing talks for conferences sponsored by the U.S. State Department. She's a wonderful person behind her with a tie is our colleague John Nag, who's our current British Council representative on the Turf Board of Trustees. And then we have in the blue shirt, Dr. Dick Tucker. Um, he is, has recently retired from uh, uh, Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, a wonderful guy very, very knowledgeable, and his specialty is uh, language planning and policy. And next to Donald, some of you may know uh, our colleague Richard, <clears throat> excuse me, Richard Bland. He worked as a regional English language officer for the U.S. State Department for many years. And then next to him in the plaid shirt, we have uh, our colleague Mitch Lubitki, who's in Germany. And then uh, the lady with the striped shirt is our colleague Carrie, Ryan, remind me what Carrie's last name is. Carrie Hannon. Yes, thank you so much. And Carrie Hannon is our observer from the U.S. State Department. So you can see we, we try to live up to our name of being the International Research Foundation. And I will tell you that um, 
these board members are not paid. In fact, it costs them a fair amount to work for turf because their expenses are not paid either. We every now and then give them a meal when they're at a board meeting, but they pay for their hotels and travel. Our mission here being paramount, and what we try to do is save all possible monies for um, uh, supporting the grants programs and for encouraging research. So I'm just seeing here that um, uh, Gordon is in Sao Paulo and he knows our friends there and also that Gordon, uh, you say presented with her, I think that was about Jody Crandall, is that correct? Gordon? Okay, that's nice. lovely. And, and I just want to tell you, I'm, I'm so excited about this partnership and the kinds of connections we have. Gordon's comments here in the chat bar have just illustrated that even though it's a big world, language teaching and, and applied linguistics as professions are uh, very tightly knit communities with lots of connections and many, many opportunities for communication. So um, I want to thank you all for participating today and we're, we're happy to respond to any questions you may have at this time or we can communicate via email and we're just really thrilled that you um, took your time to be with us this morning. Ryan, back over to you. Well, uh, let, let me just cut in there because we are running a little short. Um, I know Gordon did actually want to jump on the line um, as well and say something. Gordon, would you like to come on now? Sure. Okay. I hope you all can 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 hear me. Um, sorry that we're we're leaving Sao Paulo um, uh, tonight, so we'll have to take a rain check on that. But would love to to meet up um, with the Cultura people. Um, I just wanted to quickly quickly just say a couple couple things. First of all, Kathy and Ryan, thank you very much for this because I think it was a very clear um, uh, presentation that really shows people what opportunities we have. Um, I, what we were talking a little bit in the back channel, Rob and I. And thinking, you know, what great opportunities this this, your, your, this provides us to create um, uh, uh, tasks and uh, and learning opportunities within our community of practice through readings, through you know, um, uh, uh, different different um, uh, you know walks through the materials that you have there. So as we move forward, I'd like to think about that and see, you know, um, how can we um, uh, uh, really. Um, uh, do things amongst each other with this with a, with this incredible richness of, of resource. Um, it, as you all know, we we're very strongly promoting research within the Laureate Network, and and I do believe that you know being the the world's largest network of higher education institutions, we have a lot of data that we that you know, we can collect and that we should think about it. You know, the, the areas of research focus that TERF um, uh, uh, has are very, very close to the kinds of things that we the, we want to do. So I, I, I'm encouraging all of you, please, as, as influencers and multipliers within our organization, please get back. And, and we're going to record this, right, Rob? So it's going to be available. But please make sure that your teachers get a chance to look at this. I know there are people very much interested in research out there. So let's get the, let, let, let's get the word out and do not be shy <laughs> on this, on, 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 on really thinking about what kind of um, a possible research agendas you, you, you all, you all might, might have. Um, Again, thank you all very much. Kathy, a little plug for Monterey Institute of International <laughs> Studies, my, my alma mater. <laughs> 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 Wanted to say that was a great place to study. Um, and uh, yeah, if the feedback comes in, you've got questions. I'm sure you're just thinking about it now, but we'll, we'll, we'll certainly bring them your way, Ryan. And uh, I look forward to really, really um, uh, taking advantage of this, of, of this, um, this opportunity. It really, really gives us access Access to a whole world of EFL um, and moves us outside our own our own individual network, which has been one of the priorities I've had since the day I've arrived at Loria. So thanks again. Thank you, Gordon. Thank, Thank you, Rob. All right. So just uh, thanks for that, Gordon. Uh, just a very quick piece of housekeeping for me before we finish up. Um, for anybody watching this uh, live, I've just posted a, a link in the um, chat box. This is a very short feedback survey. It will take you two minutes maximum. Um, to anybody watching this on the recording, if you're watching this on the uh, Laureate Community of Practice, um, that link will always be live. So please do also give us feedback um, through that same survey. Also, um, if you're watching this through the Community of Practice, we'll have all of the links that we've mentioned 
um, during Ryan and Kathy's presentation. We'll have those um, posted under the video as well to the website and to sign up for the newsletter and so on. So just look directly under this video. Um, but for now, thank you very much to everybody for attending. And what can I say? Thank you, especially to Kathy and to Ryan uh, for presenting for us today. A pleasure. Thank Our you. Pleasure. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you, Thanks, everybody. Guys. Goodbye. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Rob.